Hello peeps and welcome back to Material Energy Cubed, episode 31. So, now that we've killed the end dragon, all we have left is to finish up some quests and do whatever builds we feel like doing. So, um, I have decided, and this decision comes from having had to walk out here all the frickin' time and look out here and say, okay, are my bees still running? Is my energy cell still full? No, damn it, I gotta go get some redstone and put it in that thing. Uh, how's my forestry farm holding up? Are the solars keeping up? Yeah, okay. Uh, this thing's out of power again. This thing's out of power again. I have decided I'm sick of it. I'm building a centralized power plant. I have repurposed this level for that. I've leveled out the floor. I've installed glowstone chiseled into neon lamps into the floor. And I removed the quest gate system, which you actually can do if you are under the effects of theobromine and are using a good enough pickaxe. It takes forever and a day. It's about the same hardness of obsidian, but you can bust through it. It's not like bedrock. Alright, so. The first thing I need to do is I need to make sure this thing is unloaded. Um, on the subject, I have discovered something. I figured out a little bit behind the scenes on how this mod pack works. If you take a look at the biomes, let me turn on the biome overlay, you will notice that most of the map is the light green color. Well, this light green color is a plains, right? If you go into the chamber here, though, or if you come out here, and if you're actually standing like right here, down here, that counts. Um, that's actually a jungle biome. And the larger gray one over there, that is a extreme hills biome. And the purple one down there is the mushroom biome. What he has done is he's changed the way that mob spawning works so that plains biomes no longer are allowed to spawn any sort of hostile mob unless there's a mob spawner. Which means I can build whatever the hell I want and not have to worry about lighting it up because nothing will ever spawn unless it's in one of these areas. To that, I have done a little landscaping around here. I've built myself a nice green pasture. And as soon as I get all of my bee stuff done, I'm going to move my bees up here. And probably bring my animals out here too. I've been using Meho wood planks for my foundation material because I am I'm breeding tons of blue mayho tons of it and it's not just any blue mayho let me get one of these saplings and show you what is so special about this if we get our treealizer which I put somewhere it's in here if we take our treealizer and we take a look at this blue mayho sapling, you'll notice that its saplings are high and it matures faster. And it has high sappiness. Those aren't the normal traits for a blue mayho. Well, it turns out that these wonderful, wonderful things can be used to tinker with the genetics of saplings also. So, what I did was I screwed around until I got maturation faster, which comes from an apple tree. And I screwed around until I got fertility high, which comes from a uh, balsa wood tree. And I combined them into this genetic template with fertility high and maturation faster. And I applied them to a vanilla blue mayho sapling. And when I applied them to the vanilla blue mayho sapling, I got a hybrid blue mayho sapling, which is now growing in one of these forestry farms out here that I have now set up. And one of these is just plain old generic apple, apple oaks. The other one is blue mayhos. And let me tell you a funny story. When I was setting these things up, 
I derped because I haven't used forestry in so long. I came out here and I thought I did everything perfect. I put down the farm blocks, I got them configured with power, water, uh, product input and output. I came in, I set down the dirt, and I loaded the saplings and everything. And I'm thinking, wait, why the hell isn't this thing working? And I actually went into a, another world and went into creative mode and built one up higher and you know further away from the base. I built one centered in the mushroom biome over there, thinking maybe it was the plains biome that was screwing with it. And, you know, I tinkered with this for probably a good half an hour to an hour before I realized, wait a minute, you idiot, it's a managed farm. You don't put down the dirt, it does it for you because it has to put down the frickin' humus. So I came through and I tore up all the dirt and it immediately started working. So I felt like an idiot. Just goes to show you that even modded pros occasionally have their derp moments. Anyway, so. Uh, one of the other things that I did off camera, let's go ahead and get this out of the way real quick, is I did go back to the end, and I got enough Eximite, Mutose, uh, Mutoite, or whatever it is, and Deshkalos, which is an alloy of the two. One Mutite and one Eximite give you two Dice Kalos. But I got enough to make my blocks. We'll come to the Endarium and everything in a few seconds. There's the Dice Kalos block. There's the Eximite block. There's the Mutite block. Put those away. Quest book in hand. Put the Blue Mayho away. I have that one separated because this is the original, and I don't want the original growing. I want the hybrid growing. We come back here. End Metals is now complete. We get a reward bag for it. Legendary. The utmost reward. Parcel 31 Use Helmet. Respiration 5, Aqua Affinity 5, Last Stand 3. Yeah, it looks like a sanguinite helmet. Yeah, it's a sanguinite helmet. So that's actually not a bad helmet. But honestly, I'm at a point where the amount of fighting I'm going to do from this point on is probably going to be fairly minimal. Um, I do still have dungeon to attack. I have a few a few of these spatial things that I need to go back through and re-explore because there's some areas of some of them that I haven't explored fully yet. Um, the inclusion chamber, I've got a couple of spots that I haven't really checked thoroughly. Um, I haven't checked that one room in between the biosphere, you know, where there's that conspicuous, like, hole in the wall. Well, I punched through it and I looked through and I saw a bunch of spiders and I said, nope, I want to do that on camera. So. I haven't actually looked in it yet. Um, there's that one chest underneath the uh, dirt thing in the inclusion chamber that I don't think I've checked yet. And, you know, there's just stuff all over the place that I don't think I've checked yet. So I want to go back through and kind of hunt for them. I need to find the rest of this wool. And then I still have Cloud 8 to explore, and I still have Dungeon to explore, and then I need to go back in the Nightmare and check out the Bedrock Maze because there might be something in there. I did poke my head in. It is a bedrock maze. I didn't want to go too far because I want to do it on camera, but I wanted to see kind of what I was up against, and yeah, it sucks. So, alright. Um, so, what I was doing is I was making resonant energy cells. And then these resonant energy cells, we're going to convert into, or, well, the redstone energy cells, we're going to convert into resonant energy cells. Now, I still have a bunch of endarium left. I will be expanding this system off camera, but I wanted to get started now. So, all right, so what I need to do, actually, let's put some of this stuff away before I get too far into this. We don't need the honeyed slices, we don't need the treelizer, we don't need the watering can. The watering can does work 
on those ender pearls, by the way. But there's kind of a trick to it. I looked it up. There's actually two different s cycles that this thing goes through for growth. And if it's not on the if it's not on the right cycle, it won't have a chance of growing when a growth tick comes up, and the cycle changes every so often. On ender cores, the cycle changes the most frequently, so it gives you the best chance for growing. These things grow once every day or two, and I'm up to nine of them, so it's not too bad. All right, let's go ahead. The first thing I want to do is I actually want to go downstairs. Need my pickaxe. Uh, just take this. Oh, uh, take this one. I want to go downstairs, and I want to pick up all of these solar generators. The reason why is I'm going to attach these solar generators directly to my power plant. And I've been doing a little bit of investigation off camera, and I believe I have a more efficient way to set these things up. I'm still going to have to use a variation of a redstone circuit, but I won't have to use the daylight sensor anymore. Because these things actually respond to a redstone comparator. Which is something that I haven't really used much in my series. Any of them. So, this will be a new one. Alright, so. This will run these farms basically pretty much for frickin' ever. With the amount of power drain that it's actually pulling. I haven't set these other farms up yet because I don't know what I want to do with one and the last one I haven't finished the necessary plant yet so we'll be getting to that. This is where I want to set up my power plant. Now I have a whole bus sit in here and I'm actually going to put something here. Oh, I'm not going to put something here because that's that. Okay so I'm going to put it out here probably. We're going to dig through here. Yeah, this would be a perfect place to put it. No, it won't. Damn it. I can't really put it out here either because... Uh, son of a bitch. Man, I am just shooting myself in the foot left and right here. Okay, I know one place that I haven't put anything. I haven't put anything out here. Aha! There we go. Although there is that random dirt block there. Haha! -ha. Success. Alright. But is that going to give me enough room? Because it's only going to be like, what, three blocks in between me and the bedrock? It's not going to be enough room. So what I might have to do... is I might have to just leave this area. Yeah, this area over here, I'm not going to pave over. That way I'll have a way to put put these things in. So, let me go get some paving material, and I'll show you guys how this is going to work. We're still going to use the Blue Mayho as my paving material. And I'm actually going to want some more conduit. Oh, and I need a redstone comparator, which I made one up off camera. I actually have a bunch of them, I guess. And we're going to need a little redstone. We're going to need a redstone torch, which I have. Too far. Way too far. Okay. Let's come out here and pave ourselves a little area off with these blue mayho planks. Now, ideally, I would like this to be about nine blocks. Now, see, here is where I'm not sure, because here, mobs can actually spawn, because these are in another biome, so mobs can spawn in this area. I'll have to keep this lit if I do this, unless I build out this way, because this is not. However, this is in darkness. I'm just going to have to put some torches up. Oh, 
or put some glowstone here. One or the other. Let's actually go get a torch now in order to prevent any accidents. Because if anything spawns there, it's gonna, probably going to be a spider. The last thing I need is a spider showing up out of nowhere when I'm not expecting him. I should be able to just tack that right on there, and that should prevent any mob spawning problems. Yeah, good. This is going to give me a space four wide that I can work, because... Well, no. It would be five wide, won't it? Because I can stand here, and I can look straight up, and I'm still not in dark. So, yeah. Five wide. Plenty of room. Although now we're getting out too far away from the safety torch. But if I put another safety torch right here, that should stop it. Good. And then I suppose I could actually run it around the corner here and have a little extra room. It's not like there's a large amount of power loss here. Because really there isn't any power loss, at least not yet. Something I'm probably going to end up doing is going to introduce a little power loss, but... One thing I notice that's kind of funny, when the creepers blow up next to the wall, the dirt creepers, it actually pokes through the bedrock. So, yeah, the creepers are actually capable of affecting outside the bedrock. Alright, now, we're also going to put a barricade there so I don't accidentally derp off the edge. We're going to take these solar generators and we're going to put them down. And we are going to put them down right here. We're going to put them down one. No. Actually, do I want it like that? Or do I want it over here? I think I want it over here. We're going to put it down. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. I'm leaving a space in here, kind of intentionally. So this is going to take up a little bit of room. But I mean, I got nothing but space out here, so I'm not concerned about room. And I actually don't even need this back here, but I'm going to extend it anyway, just for aesthetics. There's one. There's zero. And then we're going to need probably two beyond. Now, I'm no longer going to have this linked to a daylight sensor. What I'm going to have it linked to is I'm going to have it linked to a redstone comparator, which is going to tell me how full one of these generators is. And when that generator is full, it's going to switch all of them into discharge mode. And then, once it's in discharge mode, it's going to run until one of them is empty. And then once that one is empty, it's going to switch them all back into charging mode. This is going to require a little bit of redstone circuitry. Self-plug, if you have not watched my Redstone 101 tutorial, it'll explain a lot of what I'm going to do. Because I don't have access to Project Red here, I have to, func I have to function with vanilla redstone mechanics. Would you stop? Now, if what I'm doing looks overly complicated, it probably is. Now, we're going to use our crescent hammer to disconnect 
top and the right side of each one of these things. Which means I actually don't need this one or this one or this one. <clears throat> That's going to connect all of the solar generators. Stop it, Mr. Hiss. Go away. All right. Now, I need to punch through the here. And I'm going to run this hardened energy conduit into here. And I'm going to run it into one of these resonant energy cells. Now, it's going to start charging... It's going to charge because it has no access to light because these things are going out of the top. So I need to change that. Well, I can't do that, so let's do it like this. Don't need that one, or that one. Good. All right. That should give these things access to sunlight. I don't know why this thing is discharging if it doesn't have charging. Apply redstone signal to transmit energy inventory. It has a view of the sky. Let's go sleep. Because if I come up here and sleep, we should see this thing start charging again, and it's going to stop transmitting. It's only charging because it has no access to sunlight. It's completely dark. So now that it has access to light, it's going to charge. It's not going to discharge. So this thing is going to stop going up. So what we need is a way to tell these things, hey, you're full. You need to charge now, not discharge. We're going to do this by means of these redstone repeaters that we had before. We're also going to need at least one more redstone repeater to continue carrying our signal. We're just going to grab our entire inventory of them. And we're going to need some more redstone, we're going to need some more redstone torches, and we're going to need some more of these blue mayo planks, both for building and for circuit design. All right, <coughs> now, these two on the end, I'm actually going to punch through this wall right here, because I'm going to need a little bit more space to work with. Because I have to be able to carry a redstone signal out here to where the circuit's going to be designed. Now, what I'm going to have is called a state cell, or a memory cell. A memory cell is basically, it's basically, if you can think of it like a bit of RAM in a computer. It has two states, on or off. And by applying a redstone signal to different parts of the circuit, you can change that state. So, to build one of these, you put down a plank there, put down another one here. We put a redstone torch there, and a redstone torch there. 
We put down redstone in between these two. That one turns off. Now that one stays off. All right. Now, at the moment, this thing is currently in its off state. If we apply a redstone signal to this side, it's going to switch. It's going to switch. the circuit. So now this side is off and this side is on. And that will persist until we apply redstone si signal over here. And so on. And so on. I don't know why it didn't do it when it was there. That could actually prove pro uh, problematic. So I'm going to want to move this out just a little more. We'll do it over here. Um, I ate them. Um, I hadn't eaten yet, so I can make more. All right, now we have a slightly larger state cell. The first one that we're going to do, we're going to put down a redstone comparator on here and on here. In the middle, we're going to put a piece of redstone. Now, we need a way to light that redstone. So, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to break this. I'm going to go get probably the easiest way to do this is going to be a redstone block. But I don't know if that's going to work. So we're going to bring a redstone block. We're also going to bring a water bucket, just in case this doesn't work. Because if this doesn't work, I know something that will. A redstone comparator will only react to redstone. It will not react, or it will only react to redstone dust, or will it react to a block of redstone, I wonder? I don't know. But we'll find out. We're going to switch this into uh, subtract whatever mode? I don't know. Um, now, these things are currently at power... F uh, these things are currently fully charged. So, right now, this thing, if I put a piece of redstone here, it's going to output power 15. This one is also going to output power 15. Why are you outputting power 15? You shouldn't be. If I put the redstone there and put that down, there we go. Now this is outputting power 0, and this is outputting power 15. All right? So when this happens, we know that this energy cell is completely full. What I need this to do now is I need this to send a signal to the other side of that in order to shut that signal down. Actually. It would probably be better if I do it this way. Because this side, I want it to be sending a signal to there. Now, I don't want it to do that. What I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to have probably a repeater. Because a repeater is a diode. It only goes one way. Like that. Now, here is the trick. And this is the part I don't know about yet. If I put down a redstone torch there, that's going to turn this thing on. And it's going to start discharging it. What I need to know is, is, is this thing going to output a power of 1 when this drops too low? Or is it going to wait until there's nothing in it? Is it actually going to subtract? Is it going to take the 15 minus the 15 that this is outputting and give me zero, and then once this drops down below 470,000 or so, is it going to output one? Or is it going to wait until this thing is outputting zero and say, oh, hey, yeah, we don't need you anymore. Because if that's the case, I'm going to have to put uh, not gate in here. So we're going to leave this for a while. We're going to leave this one stuck in transmission mode. And we're going to let it fully discharge. 
and we're going to see if this thing ever gets redstone power while we build the rest of the circuit. Now, I need to be able to deliver a signal to the other side of this thing. I need to be able to deliver that signal right here. Which means I need to bring this out here. You guys had better knock it off. You have been perfectly fine all day. And now that I'm recording, you're going to do this crap? I don't think so. Redstone repeater there. And we're going to run redstone here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9... 10, and we're going to put our repeater right there. And this is going to reboost our signal for us. Um, hey, you better knock it off. Tired of it. I love my cats. If I didn't, I wouldn't have any. Okay, this thing appears to be behaving. So, what we're going to do is we're going to build the rest of the circuit. Now, when this thing... Let's see. This is the one that's telling us, hey, I'm full. So, I actually have this built completely backwards. Yeah, it's built completely backwards. This needs to be like that. You need to tell me that you're full. You need to tell me that you're empty. But that's okay. We're going to leave it as it is for now. And we're going to go through here. And we're going to build the rest of the circuit. Let's see. One... Two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, and a repeater. I don't want to put this here because it's going to start discharging. But I need to connect this in here. Now, this thing is down to about half its power. Uh, we're going to leave this alone for a few minutes, and I'm going to go check on a few other things, and we'll come back once this thing has totally emptied. I'm going to break that for now, because I don't want this actually doing anything when it gets drained. So we're going to go check on the progress of some other stuff that I've got going. Namely, the bees. Too far. Okay. Down here... I have some hill cherries planted. Now I got a hill cherry sapling for free, so I got these things growing. And I also went ahead and I, first of all, I have lots and lots of wintry drones and diligent drones now. So I got plenty of bees. Now I also have in here a sieve upgrade, and I have a sieve upgrade in here too. And I've got Tropical going in this one. I have Diligent going in this one to get me some more bees. Now, the reason why I wanted this sapling, or this pollen, is because the Mutatron actually works with saplings. If I come up here and I get into my chest here, I have some Silver Lime and some Hill Cherry saplings. And from tree breeding in the past... I know that if you take and combine a silver lime with a hill cherry, hill cherry and silver lime, you get either lemon or common walnut. We want some common walnut saplings. And we're going to need four of these things because they grow in a two by two. I need some more mutagen soon. 
All right, that gets us our four common walnut saplings. And now we can tear down all of these cherry saplings because we don't need them anymore. I've already got tons of them. We need to come up here. We need to get our industrial grafter. Start recharging him real quick. And we need to get our sanguinite axe. And we're going to want some fertilizer. And then we'll come down here and we'll just use the industrial grafter to wreak absolute havoc on these trees. Chop them down. By the way, if you hold shift and hit a leaf, it only breaks the one. If you don't hold shift and hit a leaf, it breaks them all. Like a wide swath of them. But it does use one use of the grafter for every leaf that breaks, so this is a good way to burn through the power in your grafter really fast. As you can see, my grafter is now empty. That's okay, I got plenty of these cherries. So we're just going to go ahead and chop down the trees. The rest of these that decay, if, uh, we're not going to get the stuff from them, but we don't really care. Because it's not cherries we're after anyway. We're going to pick up all of our junk here. And right here, we're going to plant one, two, three, four. And then we're going to fertilize. Not with a sapling, we're not. We're going to try to fertilize this. There we go. We have a walnut tree. Isn't that awesome? But we don't want walnuts either. Because if we take a look at walnuts compared to cherries, put that in. If we look at the hill cherry, we will see that when it is processed in a squeezer, it gives you 0 0.05 buckets of seed oil. That's pretty pathetic. If we take a look at the walnut, we're going to see that this gives us 0 0.18 buckets, more than three times the amount. That's better, but there's a step up. If we take a look at the chestnut, this bad boy gives us 2.2 buckets, so even more than the walnut. That is what we want. So, we come down here, we go back out, we admire the walnut tree that we just created. Isn't it beautiful? And then we very quickly chop it to hell. Because we never really wanted the walnut tree anyway. Now what we want is the chestnut tree, which is bred from the walnut tree. So we're going to pick up all of these wonderful saplings as soon as I clear some space out of my inventory. My inventory is full as usual. Put away all the hill cherry saplings. We're going to keep some of these common walnut saplings, four of them at least. We're going to pick up the rest of these walnut saplings and the walnut wood. I do like the way walnut wood looks. I was thinking about planting some walnut trees for the wood, but the blue mehos, just their usefulness is way beyond. So, in our advanced mutatron, we're going to take four common walnut saplings. And I happen to know that if you take a walnut sapling and crossbreed it with hill cherries, you get your sweet chestnuts. And 
and this is the tree that we really wanted. And looking at my timer, it is just now 40 minutes in. So we are going to go up and check out the progress on our solar thing and see if this is going to work the way I want it to. And then we're going to end the episode. Now, if this is working the way I want it to, now that this thing is empty, it's not empty yet, apparently. Oh, we're here just in time. When this thing goes empty, we should see that light up instantly. Maybe not? Really? Okay, well, here's what I want. This thing is not full. All right, this thing is not full. What I need this thing to do, we're going to have to use a not gate here. So I'm going to have to probably expand the circuit just a little bit. Maybe use a repeater to get around a corner. Um, let's go ahead and try putting in a not gate. Because this thing is empty. It is well and truly empty. We're outputting zero power. Now, wait. No, as soon as this thing is starting to get power, I want it to output. So what I need is I need this one here. Shit. All right, well. So I'm going to have to think about this a little more off camera. You guys see what I'm getting at. It's just the technicality of getting there. So... I'm going to end the episode now, and we will dink around with this more next episode. Um, between episodes, I am going to go ahead and get a fruit farm, an orchard, going down there with some chestnut, or with some of these walnut, uh, yeah, chestnut. I was right the first time. With some of these chestnut trees growing. And figure out what I want to do with that last farm. I'm not sure if I want to do now i'm not sure what i want to do with the last farm yet but we'll figure it out um for right now this has been night dagger with episode uh 31 holy crap time flies uh material energy cubed hope you guys are enjoying the series i'll catch you later peeps